Hello, everyone, and welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of Commerce Tools Elevate. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight. I'm sitting here with my co-host and analyst, Shelley Kramer. Shelley, our next guest is right up your alley. Well, I would say that what he focuses on and what your company, what his company focuses on is all things digital transformation and speeding that. And that is very much up my alley. Near so we're dear to your heart. Very dear to my heart. Exactly. So we're thrilled to have you. I'm, we're, I'm here to welcome Tarek, Tarek Nazir. He is the head of digital at EPAM. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Hey, good to meet you. So tell our viewers for the unanointed a little bit about EPAM and what, you, what you're all about. Sure. Uh, EPAM is a digital transformation company. We help our customers build digital products and we help businesses transform through engineering and software. So your job is never done. No, it's continuous. <laughs> I actually. love that about digital transformation. Indeed. Yes. So what led EPAM to start working with Commerce Tools? You know, we've been working with Commerce Tools for over a decade now. And, and that's about as, lo as old as they are. Nearly, exactly. So we're not far from the beginning. There's been a really strong executive connect from the outset. And, you know, EPAM really prides itself um, in its engineering. It's where we built our reputation. And so with the paradigm that Commerce Tools were working towards, you know, is it ine inevitable that our paths would cross and we'd start doing business together? So we worked on some of the earliest implementations of Commerce Tools. In fact, we even partnered with Commerce Tools to co-found the Mac Alliance. You know, we were there right from, from, from the very beginning of it all. You know, speaking of the Mac Alliance, that's exactly what I want to talk about now. So I know that EPAM is a founding member. Talk with us a little bit about why this alliance was created, what the goal was, what you do. Yeah, sure, no problem. Well, the Mac paradigm, both the architectural paradigm, but then also the execution paradigm that comes with it, was ill understood at the time. And we needed to make sure it became mainstream, that we were building education in the marketplace. And when it became apparent that there was an ecosystem of you know, software vendors and SIs who were all really pushing for this, we clubbed together to build broad understanding and appreciation for the movement that has now become Mac. And it's been excep exceptionally successful, starting really with a lot of education around the technical paradigm, but more recently, so much so in terms of the business transformation paradigm and what it takes to truly transform leveraging these composable architectures. Can you tell us a little bit about the, what makes up the, the mock technologies? I mean, I know it's swappable, composable, but walk us through a little bit about kind of the pieces there, if you would. Sure. I mean, I guess the, the, the clue is in the name. Right. So the M stands for microservices. Okay. So that's about making sure that um, all the capability is componentized and available through these microservices um, so that you can uh, create interoperability in different ways. The A is for API first, meaning that you can connect to everything both at the front and at the back to achieve anything that you need to from a flexibility perspective. The C is about being cloud native. Of course. Uh, and the H, of course, is headless. Okay. Um, and with headless, of course, it gives um, businesses absolute freedom to innovate in the, in the CX layer without being tied down to one of those more tightly coupled architectures. Okay, perfect. Users. That makes perfect sense. So why do, you, why do you believe that Mach is the way into AI? Oh, that's a really good, 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 good question. I love this topic. Well, in reality, because of the paradigm that I've just described, operating in a Mac architecture effectively means that both the data and the services are available for you to consume within an AI project. You don't have to do any further work. Your data's already in the right places. The interoperability is already in place. So you have a ready-made box of tools from which you can start innovating on top of leveraging Gen AI. And so if we weren't working in a Mac architecture, we might be working with some customers with some more legacy stacks where we have to go and make those things available before we can really start innovating with Gen AI. So it's a perfect precursor because these set of best practices you know, are an accelerant. Basically, you can, you can get going with the innovation quickly. Yeah, you're starting from a from a further point ahead. So, what one of the things we love on the cube is customer stories. Sure. Can you share any examples of, of customers that were able to use the Mock Alliance and and really further and drive their accelerated uh, innovation? Yeah, sure. Uh, I'll take an example of um, Primark, for example. So, with Primark, who have, do, you, do you guys know Primark? Yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. it's a. Uh, but you uh, can tell our viewers. Yeah, this fast fashion global global retailer. And what's really interesting about Primark was. For, you know, since they, they were formed, and especially in the recent um, years or so, they were always saying they would never get into e-commerce, that they were a pure bricks and mortar business, and that was their focus. And then, of course, COVID came along, 
And they started to rethink their way through. <laughs> but for Primark, which is really a fast fashion retailer, to think about how it would be able to deliver uh, e-commerce business at a margin, when you consider you know, the average order value, they really needed to have a really bespoke strategy and they needed the ability to start somewhere, learn and evolve. And we actually launched with them using click and collect. So your ability to um, browse local stock and then collect from store. And we were even able to kind of range from products that weren't necessarily stored, uh, uh, ranged inside that local store. And since then we've iterated and evolved at breakneck pace. This is what Mac architectures and working with commerce tools enables. It gives you the agility, gives you the pace. And so if you know you're working at an enterprise scale and you need that agility, it's you know, incredibly well suited. Again, so I hadn't heard of click and connect. I think that must be- Click must and be, collect. Click and collect, yeah. yes, yes. So that must be something that you're talking about in Europe, but not yet I, in I think America. that's right. So click and collect basically means you uh, order online and pick up in, in store. store. Yeah, yeah no, we, we, we just you got call it online and pick up in store. Yeah. I know, we're so boring. Uh, yeah. Click and collect is so much better. It's a very you British know, way of one, saying it, isn't it? One thing, though, that I think is so cool is that, you know, and as as we were talking about the Mac Alliance and educating ourselves, you know, I love this language. This is from the Mac Alliance website, but it's the composable and swappable architecture means that enterprises are essentially facing their last major replatforming effort. That's music to many people's ears, right? And then you just touched on this, but being able to continuously evolve their ecosystems, because again, in this, in these times and, and you know, a digital transformation journey, one of the things that I've spent the last decade educating customers about is that, you know, I know this seems like a big undertaking and it is, yeah. but here's the thing, we're never going to be finished. And I don't mean to burst any bubbles or anything else, but understand that this is now, today. And the world is moving. A, we're, we're in a process of continuous Indeed. evolution and, and you know, measuring, monitoring, tweaking, pivoting, Absolutely. changing. And that's, you know, it meets the customer desires. It meets our vendor partners' desires and all that. So I really love this whole, I love the major, last major replatforming effort because that's wonderful. And then positioning your company to be able to continually evolve in a way that is seamless I think that's really, really important, and that's what that's what customers are looking for. You know, I couldn't agree more with that. And obviously, the ability to swap components in and out of the architecture means that you can focus component at a time or capability at a time, so that you don't have these major replatforming programs, as you as you said. The other point, though, is the enterprise agility that it creates. Actually, we've seen our customers radically shift some of their business models, trial entirely different new routes to market, and. You know, if you were working in a more legacy estate, being able to, to pivot like that, it's becoming a necess necessity yeah. in, in business today. And I think that's the kind of often the unspoken hero of, of a Mac architecture is the true business agility that's created at a time when we need it most. And the business agility, I'm imagining that not 100% of those pivots are immediately successful. Sure. So some, so they often fail, and that's the importance too of failing fast, understanding, okay, what went wrong here? How do we readjust? How do we try something else? Exactly. So what other opportunities do you foresee in, in, in using composable architecture with customers? Well, I think that composable architectures up till now have really hinged um, predominantly around commerce. Yeah. And, but increasingly so, what we're seeing is the paradigm extending in many places. We're starting to see composable ERP players come into the market. The Mac ecosystem and the composable ecosystem is getting larger and larger. To the point really where you're starting to see many more traditional ISVs in all corners of the market starting to move towards the paradigm. Sometimes they may overclaim that, but, but you know, in reality, there is an absolute movement to this paradigm. Kind of means that in most ways, I can imagine a future where a significant proportion of the overall technology capability could be driven through these composable architectures. I think that's pretty exciting. Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, to your point about uh, the Alliance um, uh, growing, you know, I see that today there are 100 participating members oh. and 65 of those are I ISVs. So to your point, that's an important part of this yeah. ecosystem. And the waiting list actually is growing. And I, with the uh, Mac Alliance itself, we've just actually extended the way in which we'll be introducing new members to the Alliance to also allow us to welcome 
um, specific products within a larger business and so not just the business as a whole. And this has become important because we are actually starting to see specific products in different ecosystems really starting to fulfill the, the ambition of Mac. And I think that's going to give the industry um, uh, much more access. Uh, I think it's a really smart move. You started this conversation talking about the deep partnership that you have with Commerce Tools. Indeed. Um, can you describe a little bit about the, the, the cultural connection that you have? Because you've been together now for about 10 years, and it seems like you, you get each other and you have a similar customer-centric approach to solving problems. Can you talk about how you work together? Because, I mean, it's, it's not collaborating with another company is not always seamless. No, it, it's not always seamless. And I think... You know, with Commerce Tools in particular, they, they really do value their partnerships. And um, we are not an insignificantly sized partner, having just one partner of the year and, and other points. But I think what's quite interesting is I think we've been on a fairly similar journey, which is what makes the partnership so interesting. When Commerce Tools first entered the market, it was really very well-informed CIOs and CTOs who would understand the value of the paradigm and what it would do for the business. Today, it's a much more business-focused discussion or an increasingly business-focused discussion. And the truth is it's exactly the same where EPAM came from. Our roots were in engineering and increasingly we're so much more industry-focused uh, and we've, we've kind of gone through that evolution together. And I think now in the era of AI, the need to be much more focused and tuned to the business goal and the value that can be created off the back of it is, is really very present. And when we work together with commerce tools, we're leaning into unique customer problems and we're actually solving them together. It's a, it's a real partnership effort. And I think in today's challenging macroeconomic times, I think that shortening time to value, all of that, you know, being able to point to measurable ROI, all of those things are incredibly, incredibly, I mean, those are the first things we're talking about. So I think we have to, it has to be around business problems as a whole and the goals and that sort of thing. I think that's absolutely right. And IFAM tends to focus more towards the upper end of, of the market where many of our clients are multinational, multi-brand, often multi-divisional within, within those brands as well. That's an awful lot of business to take with you as you're going through this chain. Yeah. And again, that's another part of this agility point I was making is it's, it's not just the agility of the business as a whole, but the ability to iterate in specific markets or specific objectives in key markets. It's really important in these times yeah. to allow you to kind of push and pull at, at what you're doing from a business perspective as things are changing so quickly. Well, so many businesses are so eager to experiment with AI and make sure that they're getting some return on investment with those experiments. This is the year that AI becomes real, apparently, apparently, apparently that's what we're yeah. told. So how are you working together with Commerce Tools to help customers realize their AI, make their AI dreams turn, it, turn into a reality? You know, well, what's very interesting is that Commerce Tools are very clear about what they are. And they fundamentally provide a platform and the core capability specifically so that their customers can start innovating and customize and focus on their differentiation and not on the commodity. And so really, Commerce Tools are the fundamental enabler. And then when EPAM is working with its, with its customers, we have some clients who are indeed kind of experimenting and are, are happily experimenting at this stage, but we have others who are truly industrializing what they're trying to do. And um, with some real differentiation and, and competitive advantage. And it's really to the point I made earlier. When you have all of these microservices available and all of the data in the right place, the question is about figuring out where you're going to start, proving it, iterating it, and, and going from there. And that's why I think the, the combination of commerce tools and this kind of AI experimentation is so powerful. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the path of figuring out. Um, what the best use case is, what, because, you know, in those early use cases, you always want to pick something that you're pretty confident is going to deliver on the ROI front, because that's how we get other, you know, that's how we get more buy-in. That's how we make it happen. So I think that's really an important part of the equation. Absolutely. But, yeah. So what are you getting out of this conference uh, here in Miami? I, I know you're spending time with some colleagues. Uh, the sun is shining. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's beautiful out there. Vitamin D, exactly. Indeed. But what kinds of conversations are you having and, and what do you hope to bring back with you to London? Well, um, I think it's a great way of bringing together even all of EPAM's team who are working in this space. Yeah. Actually, it's been really fun for us to all connect here. And um, 
There are so many partners here that we work with day in and day out. So to kind of build those relationships has been amazing. We have 20 of our clients here at the conference. We've had a lot of catching up to do with clients new and old. And in some ways, this feels like a bit of a celebration for all that we've achieved together. And um, that kind of makes it quite fun. Yeah, that is awesome. And as you said before the camera started rolling, come, colleagues need to get together and break bread. Yeah, exactly and, right. And enjoy. Yeah, exactly. And Miami is not a bad place to do that. <laughs> Far from it. <laughs> Derek, a pleasure having you on the Cube. Thank you so much for joining us. Pleasure. I'm Rebecca Knight for Shelley Kramer. Stay tuned for more of the Cube's coverage of Commerce Tools Elevate. You're watching the Cube, the leader in enterprise tech news.